the good news is that that means you don't have to take notes in here. That means when you walk into this classroom, you don't, you don't need your notebooks. You need nothing at all. Uh, when you walk in here, um, your, your only job is to just think. Just think. That's it. That's your only job. And if you have something that you think and you really got to, you want to remember it or somebody, something that somebody says, maybe by chance something I happen to say, but um, something somebody else says or something, right? Um, what, you, what you want to do is, uh, and you need to, you want to write something down, then pull your phone out and write it down, whatever, that's cool. But you can't be on your phones, man. This is a thinking class. That's all it is. This is, an, this is 75 minutes twice a week where you come into this room where you get to have the opportunity to think about what I think are some really interesting issues. And, well, no, they are interesting issues because we're only going to talk about things that are interesting. What's important is that you just have that opportunity to not worry about a grade. If you do the work you need to do, if you do what you need to do in this class, which is not that difficult, it just takes time, so you have to stay organized and do it. It doesn't take that much time, but if you do it, you'll get an A. And the class is designed like that, that I don't want you worrying about not getting a, a, a grade. Like, I want you to actually do the things that were set up for you to do. And all those things are really interesting. You don't have to take notes. You don't have to worry about what does Sam think or what do I think. You know, none of that. But that also means, that you, got, you know, you got to be listening and pay attention. Luckily for you, I don't talk that much in here. That we have a lot of engagement with you with other people in class. If I talked all the time in here, well then, I, I, you, you know, I would allow you to pick your phones up and do whatever you want to do because I'm not, maybe not that interesting. But other people are interesting and so that's how we're gonna rock and roll, okay? So is that cool? Okay, so this is me when I first started teaching this class, right? <laughs> it's actually a, really, a funny story. How I got hired, I was, I was living in Ecuador uh, doing research and you know, I was kind of flunk going back and forth in Ecuador the mountains the jungle where, wherever I was But I I came up here my wife. Well, she was my oh, I don't know what she was at the time. She was my partner at the time. She was Started grad school here the year earlier. So I can't, Was coming here to live in sin with her because we weren't married and I needed a teaching gig. Oh, I needed something. I didn't need anything because I would have done anything. It didn't really matter. But I had been teaching for a number of years and I went to the social department and I had just gotten back, right? Like I was still, I had long hair, put, put like a bandana around that dude, cut off shorts. I was in bare feet, right? I had a cut off t-shirt and I was just dropping my, my resume off to the social department just because you know, I'm like, well, I, I just got to get it. There's no way that the, the, the department chair is going to be there because uh, it was the middle of summer. It was, you know, like June or something. And so I go in and the assistant says, oh, no, he's in his office. Why don't you go see him? And I was like, okay, here we go. Anyway, so I went in and anyway, I got a job. And uh, but anyway, the second year, this was the really the only class that they had, Social 119, the only class that, that they really had for me to teach, that there wasn't anything else. Uh, so I said, all right, man, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do 119. Anyway, that was the fall of 1991. And, uh, and, and, and here I am. Um, never thought I would stay here. As life happens, many of you will figure this out. Like, yeah, you have to get to a certain age and look back and see how, how fascinating it is for doorways to open and close and the doorways that you wanted. Hey, listen to this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. And, and if you really hear this, I will guarantee that you, this, this will really shape your life in critical moments that you really, you really need it. You'll draw on it. It'll help you, right? Every time you walk through a doorway because, because something, you're going to do something, right? You're going to change majors. You're going to get a job. You're going to change your apartment. You're going to break up with your significant other, whatever it is, right? Um, you flunk an exam, you pass an exam. Uh, every time you do that, good things happen and bad things happen, okay? Every single time. Because that's how life is, right? You don't see that till you have lots and lots of experience like me. Because life is just like this 
fascinating web of cause and effect, right? All these paths you go down. But that means that everything you want to have happen, like you really, you're yearning for it, you want it to happen. If I could just get this internship, if I could just get this job, if I could just ace my exam, if I could just not have to take calc or, or, you know, math 121 over again or whatever the case is, right? When you walk through that doorway, right? And it happens for you, right? And you walk through the door, you get to the other side and like, oh, whew, all right, great, I arrived. There's bad things on the other side of that doorway. There's things that you don't want to have happen. There's things that are going to happen to you that are going to be a problem for you. That you're going you're gonna to confront things. You're going to run into things. It could be any number of things. You might get run over by a bus on College Avenue. It could be that, any, who knows, right? Because you did that, you may have missed out on meeting your your life partner, who's like the most awesome person in the world. And when bad things happen to you, you know what I mean? It's like, whatever happens, I don't want to go through that door. Like, I need to get into my, you know, finance major, man. If I, fuck, if I don't get into finance, and, and you don't get in, and you're just like, oh, you know, and you're down at wherever. Yeah, it's just terrible, and you think your life is over, and like, holy shit. And you go through this doorway, the bad doorway, the thing you don't want, and you walk through it, on the other side of this doorway is some really cool things that later in life, you'll go like, whoa, damn, man. Like, like thank God I didn't get, get into that finance degree because who knows what it is. And you meet your life partner, and then one day you have a child, and you're sitting there looking at this child, and you're going like, holy shit. If I didn't, if I had gotten into the finance class, this little cherub being wouldn't even exist. And like, how awesome is that? And here you are. And like, and you don't, everything in life. And that's how life is. And so like, if you see that, if you really get it, it's like, it's, it's the miracle of reality. It's just, it's a miracle, man. It's such a cool thing. And then every time all these good and bad things happen, first off, when the really good things happen, you don't, you don't get too high. You don't feel too good about yourself because you got to keep looking over your shoulder and saying, oh shit, that just happened. What bad things are going to happen to me as a result of that? And when bad things happen, you think like, oh damn, what are the good things that are going to happen because that ha-? You see what I mean, right? You see how that is? If you do that, if you live by that, life is awesome. If you don't live by it, life is awesome too. But I'm just saying. Okay, so that's me also uh, with my dad, the one on the left, obviously. And my doll, by the way. And wearing pink. And uh, so my parents were, my mom was 45 when I was born. My dad was uh, 56 when I was born. They were unconventional because they were, well, they were older. They didn't care. By the time I came along, well, first off, Uh, It's too long of a story. My mom had five kids. I was the only one that was planned. Let me just say that. That I know, we know was planned for sure, right? Which is really fascinating. I was socialized from a young age to be outside the box, right? And to live outside the box. And I very much live outside the box. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, first off, I kind of, as much as possible, I just kind of follow my own path. And because I'm a sociologist, it helps to really understand the ways in which, um, you know, we're constrained by rules that other people impose on it, which are really good things, right? Because, you know, you, you want people to sort of, for example, in this country, anyway, drive on the right side of the road because that's a good thing, right? Like, you want people to follow rules. Like, rules make sense. But too many rules are a problem. And so, anyway, I, I grew up always kind of pushing the boundaries of certain rules and asking questions and thinking about things on my own terms. And so it's a miracle that curiosity survives formal education, which is really is a miracle, that how often are you all thinking about, you know, uh, thinking versus thinking about how to get an A or how to complete your assignments versus just thinking. I mean, you know, we're gonna, we live a certain amount of time, which is a fraction, of, a fraction, it's like a heartbeat. And, and then we die. And you're dead. You'll never come back into this incarnation of a body. And like, you know, so really you get one chance. And like, and we spend that chance thinking that, I don't know, 
I don't know, fuck, having money, getting grades, getting the right job, getting whatever, it's like it's all going to matter. And So my dad died when I was nine, okay, nine and a half. You know, anybody have a parent die? How many of you have, have at least one of your parents who have died already? So it's, it's intense, right? It's, it's, it's traumatic. And, and yet for me, there was a, a kind of a release because um, my mom was really busy and she was working all the time and then pretty quickly she had like three jobs and I, I was able to really spend a lot of time raising myself. I got to really experience schooling on my own terms. I don't ever m remember my mom even asking to see my report card. I don't remember my report cards and I don't remember my grades. What I remember was I really like to read, so I would like skip class and I would go down to the library and I would read books and you know, I'd go to the library every three or four weeks and I'd bring home a stack of books and I would read, but I didn't care about grades. Um, I didn't see the point of school. I didn't really, I didn't get it, but I really liked to read and so my grades weren't very good at all. Um, all the way through high school, they weren't very good. Uh, but I loved, I loved thinking. But what I didn't have, and the thing about my dad dying was, he would have forced me to think about grades. And, and I would, my, my brain would have been colonized by the tyranny of grades and schooling. But as it was, I got to do it on my own terms. And so when I, I got to college, I wasn't going to go to college, but, you know, well, obviously, because I didn't have great... By the way, I took the ACT exam. I scored in the 51st percentile. So I'm above average. And uh, I didn't even know what it was. I found out that if I applied to college, if I went out to the local college, University of Toledo, I'm from Ohio, that I could get a, a day off school, which didn't really matter because I'd just skip school anyway. But I had a motorcycle. I put my golf clubs on my back. I went in, I applied. It took me like 20 minutes, and I went and played a round of golf. And, uh, and I got in. And after two and a half years, I was still a freshman because I kept, I would take a full slate of classes and then I would drop out of everything because I just wasn't in it. I was being a musician. I, I, I'm a drummer. I was playing in bands and we were gigging all the time and I was, and I was working and I just, I didn't see it. I didn't get it. Like a lot of, some of you, right? Like I just didn't get it. I wasn't ready for it. I didn't see it. I didn't understand it. it didn't make sense. But two and a half years into my college career, right? I was still kind of halfway through my freshman year by credits. Something happened in my brain, man. I, I don't know what it was, but something happened. And I said, I, I'm tired of not understanding the world. Like I'm reading, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but I don't have a framework for understanding the world. So I quit everything I was doing and I became a serious full-time student. I didn't worry about grades, I didn't worry about a lot of things, but I became a serious student. So I did all the homework, I jumped through all the hoops, I read everything, I did the stuff, I wrote the papers, I did everything that I was supposed to do. And, uh, and by and large, you know, I got like C's and B's because I didn't have a lot of skills at that point in time. Um, and then eventually I kind of got up to the place where I was getting A's and B's. But the point is, I started to learn how to think. And I was like, this is fun. And so I then uh, went to, to get my master's also at University of Toledo in, all in sociology. And I just kept thinking and thinking and thinking. And and just enjoyed it. There was nothing I wanted to do more. And then I went for my PhD, and then, and then, then here I am, right? And so the point, I say this because a lot of times, you know, people have this idea that, you know, if you get to a place like this, like where you're standing in front of a class, you get here because, you know, well, you've been a serious student your whole life. It's like, no, I have been a serious student on my own terms, not on anybody else's terms. And so, it, so it, the, the, my curiosity survived because I didn't hook my trailer, so to speak, to formal education. So I was able to really sustain that, what I think is really the curiosity piece. And that's how I do this class. Just to, just to spark things, okay? And the, and the key, one thing is really important. It's like, um, this, th this is a class on race and culture. And like, you know, it, we talk about a lot of really sensitive issues here. And, you know, what you need to know or see is like, 
we're just going to dive into stuff. This is some of the most fascinating work that we can do. And, and my job isn't to, get you, isn't to get you to think in a certain way. Whatever it is, like think in, in more woke terms or more liberal terms or think, you know, we're all too woke in this college world and we need to be a little less woke, so you need to be a little more conservative, whatever. I don't know what it is. But it's not any of that. My job is to get you to think. What we do in here is we just keep touching different issues and a lot of sensitive issues. And we're just going to keep touching them and tapping into them and engaging. And in you, what you're going to do is just going to think on your own terms. And, and what I want is for every time you leave this room, I want you to think some different things than you thought when you came in. Not things that I think, because I'm not going to tell you a lot of what I think, but just things, just different things, different ideas that you'll come to on your own as a result of just being in here and hearing different ideas being expressed. And it's, it's really, a, it's such a fascinating journey, okay? So this is really, really important. The, I, I'm not, you don't need to, I'm not ever trying to get anyone to think like me, ever. And, you know, uh, and, and I'm not trying to get, I'm never trying to get anyone to think in any particular ways. I am trying to get you to think differently than how you think. That's it. Doesn't matter. If you're more liberal, if you, if you identify as like a really hardcore liberal, I'm like, listen, man, chances are you really don't understand authentic conservative more traditional conservative ideas because if you did you'd embrace some of those because they're really cool ideas and if you fancy yourself or see yourself as much more of a uh, like a, a conservative right then it's like yeah well I bet I can show you all the ways in which you're not conservative because there are a lot of really cool liberal ways of thinking and scholarship and understanding that you probably embrace and you certainly would embrace if you really understood them. I don't mean like the stuff that we see, uh, the way it's characterized and so on, right? The way you're like, really thinking about stuff. It's like really cool ideas from all over the place.